I would uh, welcome members to the seventh meeting of the Delegated Powers and the Law Reform Committee. Um, we have apologies this morning from David Torrance, who is unable to attend the meeting, and he has submitted his apologies. We're very pleased to welcome uh, George Adam, who's attending as a substitute member. Welcome, George. So, um, it's proposed that uh, the committee hold item five in private. Uh, this will be an opportunity for the committee to consider its approach to considering SSIs arising from the Bankruptcy Scotland Act 2016. Is the committee uh, content to consider item five in private? Content. Thank you. Uh, we now move to agenda item two, which is consideration of instruments subject to the affirmative procedure. And the first instrument is the Draft Courts Reform Scotland Act 2014, relevant officer and consequential provisions order 2016. Article 4.1 of this order appears to be defectively drafted. That article makes transitional provision that the several modifications of primary and secondary legislation which are set out in Schedule 1, other than Paragraph 7, do not apply to small claims in the Sheriff Court. The reference to Paragraph 7 is an error. The Scottish Government intends that the modifications contained in Paragraph 8 of the Schedule should apply to small claims. Those in Paragraph 7 should not so apply. This was drawn to the attention of the Scottish Government and the Government proposes to correct the error in the Minister's signing copy should the Parliament affirm the draft order. However, our legal briefing suggests that the error in the transitional provision is neither highly self-evident nor insignificant. The draft order has also been published on www.legislation.gov.uk. Committee could report the draft order should be withdrawn and relayed in the correct terms for approval by the Parliament. And if relaying the order raises a difficulty, the Scottish Government could alternatively consider laying an amending instrument to correct the error timidly for this instrument coming into force on the 28th of November. Do members have any comment? On there being none, does the committee wish to draw the order to the attention of the Parliament on the reporting ground I, as Article 4.1 appears to be defectively drafted. Agree. Thank you. And does the committee wish to accept a recommendation in our legal briefing that the Scottish Government could be called on to withdraw and relay the draft order in the correct terms for approval by the Parliament? Agreed. Thank you. We now move to the remaining instruments subject to the affirmative procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the Draft Budget Scotland Act 2016 Amendment Regulations 2016. Is the committee content with this instrument? Content. Many thanks. Now move to agenda item three, which is consideration of instruments subject to negative procedure. First instrument is Civil Legal Aid Scotland Fees Amendment Regulations 2016. SSI 2016-290. <coughs> Regulation 22C of the instrument contains a drafting error. New Regulation 52BA in the Civil Legal Aid Scotland Fees Regulations 1989, the 1989 regulations, as inserted by Regulation 22C of the instrument, defines a simple procedure case with reference to Section 72.3 of the Courts Reform Scotland Act 2014, Section two, the, the 2014 Act. Section 73, se, Section 72.3 does not contain a definition of simple procedure case. Rather, it lists a, types of proceedings which may only be brought subject to simple procedure. The definition of a simple procedure case is found instead in Section 72.9 of the 2014 Act. The Committee notes that the Scottish Government intends to amend the definition of simple procedure case in the 1989 regulations sometime in advance of the date on which the remaining provisions of the 2014 Act relating to simple procedure come into force. That date is expected to be no earlier than September 2017. 
Additionally, <coughs> there is a drafting error in paragraph 2 of the table of civil legal aid fees in new schedule 2A to the 1989 regulations as inserted by regulation 5.3 and the schedule to this instrument. The entry in paragraph 2 sets a fee for time spent by a solicitor or solicitor's clerk in carrying out work other than that prescribed in paragraphs 3 to 6 of the table. The reference should be to work other than that prescribed in paragraphs 3 to 7. The Scottish Government intends to correct this error by correction slip. However, as the error does not appear to be self-evident in nature, the committee could call on the Scottish Government to correct this error by amending the instrument. Do members have any comment in this regard? And there being none, does the committee wish to draw the Parliament's attention to the instrument under the general reporting ground? Indeed. Thank you. And does the committee wish to note that the first of the errors in the instrument is to be corrected by the laying of an amending instrument? Agreed. And does the committee also wish to call on the Scottish Government to correct the second error by laying an amending instrument and not by way of a correction slip? Agreed. Agreed. Many thanks. And so we now move to the remaining instrument subject to the negative procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the representation of the people, absent voting at local government elections, Scotland, Amendment Number 2, Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-264. Is the committee content with this instrument? Content. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Moving now to Agenda Item 4, which is a consideration of an instrument that is not subject to any parliamentary procedure. Uh, the Private Housing Tenancy Scotland Act 2016, Commencement uh, Number 1, Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-298, C28. Is the committee content with this instrument? Excellent. Thank you very much. And that concludes the committee's public business for today. And so we now move into private session.